Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to your show in the light of the Quran. Today we have a very important light. It is very beautiful because it tells us about the human nature, especially of those people who display what uh, or something different to what they have in their hearts, to what they conceal in their hearts. So it's a very good thing for us. Actually, these traits that are mentioned here, mentioned here they help us improve ourselves so that if we have some of them we can get rid of them and it tells us as well about the people who claim to do what is good but in fact they are spreading mischief on the land and there's a very important point here that Allah gives us some strong instruction very practical about how to deal with our religion and it is very important because we need Muslims to un we need today to understand our religion right so that we fulfill the trust Allah has given us uh, the, the trust that Allah has entrusted us with and we can live Islam as we should really live just as the early generations did. We'll start with the recitation as usual then inshallah we'll get to derive the wisdoms and the light from these wonderful verses. <coughs> ومن الناس من يعجبك قوله في الحياة الدنيا ويشهد الله على ما في قلبه ويشهد الله على ما في قلبه وهو ألد الخصام وإذا تولى سعى في الأرض ليفسد فيها ويهلك الحرث والنسل والله لا يحب الفساد وإذا قيل له اتق الله أخذته العزة بالإثم فحسبه جهنم ولبئس المهاد ومن الناس من يشري نفسه ابتغاء مرضات الله والله رؤوف بالعباد يا أيها الذين آمنوا دخلوا في السلم كافة ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين فإن زللتم من بعد ما جاءتكم البينات فاعلموا فاعلموا أن الله عزيز حكيم هل ينظرون إلا أن يأتيهم الله في ظلل من الغمام والملائكة والملائكة وقضي الأمر وإلى الله ترجع الأمور Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back Now these beautiful verses from Surah Al-Baqarah uh, give us a lot of wisdom because Allah talks about two types of people here then after that Allah gives us a very important advice that we can easily insha'Allah uh, apply in our lives and implement and live by live by its light in all our affairs now Allah the first thing Allah says is uh, that and of mankind there are certain people there is someone or there are certain people whose speech dazzle you 
Their speech dazzle you, dazzles you. It makes you amazed. You admire the way they speak because they speak very eloquently and they uh, have, uh, actually they display, they promise a lot of good things. The way they speak is, is very confident, is very impressive. So when you hear them speaking, they are very, you are impressed, strongly impressed and taken by the beauty of their speech, by the eloquence of the manner in which they express themselves and talk about their plans and talk about the good that they promise others. <clears throat> but subhanAllah, uh, this is actually today is very, very spread, very common, especially with politicians. When they talk to you, they promise you, you are amazed at the way they speak. You are very impressed. You admire what they say. You are dazzled with the way they speak, the eloquence that they have, the good things that they promise to do, and the good character that they, dis they seem to display, the so-called so good character they display. But in reality, it's a different case. This is why Allah says, uh, and among people uh, are those whose uh, speech dazzles you <coughs> and... Uh, uh, when they speak about this world, actually you are dazzled and you are amazed by their speech. And when, and actually these people call upon Allah to be a witness over what they say or over what is in their hearts. So they display good intentions. They uh, display uh, good gestures that what they want is good. What they aim at is something very good and very constructive. And their speech is very strong. But Allah says, in reality... And in their hearts, they are your staunch opponents, O Muhammad. They are the uh, fiercest opponents and enemies of Islam. Imagine, this case is very common today. So many people uh, amaze you with their speech and you get uh, deluded by the beauty of the words and the style of speaking and the style of expressing themself, themselves. But in reality, they are the enemies of Islam. And if they get the chance, they would destroy Islam. Then... Allah says, and when they leave you, O Muhammad, when they turn away from you, or when they, when you are not, when they are not in your presence, uh, they direct their efforts, or this person directs his efforts uh, to spread mischief on the land and in, uh, among the people, destroying everything on the land, destroying everything that is good, and Allah does not like mischief and corruption. Imagine these people impress you with their speech, but in reality. They spread mischief on the land. Now so many people today tell you about liberation, tell you about freedom, liberating people, liberating the people of Iraq, liberating women, liberating the oppressed people, the poor people. And they talk about, like for example, the uh, trade uh, uh, conferences that they have and the meetings and all that and the plans that they have for the poor, poor nations that they want to re uh, elevate the standards of living in the whole world. It's very beautiful speech, very beautiful words, very beautiful conferences and promises. But the more you get involved with them, the worse the state of your people will be, would be. This is the reality of most of the people today who have taken upon themselves the leadership of humanity in trade, in politics, in everything. So they say, we want to liberate women. Especially they talk about freeing Muslim women from the constraints of religion or culture. Sometimes they put it in different and beautiful words in a beautiful, beautiful manner. But in reality, they want to destroy the religion. They want to destroy the souls or, and they want to destroy the belief that the Muslims, the treasure, the wonderful treasure that the Muslims have. In the name of freedom, in the name of liberation, in the name of affluence, like in, on all these... Uh, uh, conferences that deal with trade and commerce and the globalization and all that stuff. These words are very beautiful, but in reality, they are our staunch opponents. They want to destroy or they want to keep us weak. And I would like to give an example here. One of the Muslim countries, which is Malaysia. Malaysia, now I can say relatively the leadership there, the people in charge of the country, they had a very strong insight, especially in the last two decades they had a very strong insight. They knew about the reality of this world. So they did not get involved in uh, all these treaties about commerce and trade and the, global, uh, the things that globalization force upon the people and impose upon the, different, the poorer countries. So this is why their, uh, their financial situation, the trade in this country, uh, the financial progress that they are achieving is phenomenal. It's very strong. And even when the countries of Southeast Asia were hit 
by that calamity a couple of years ago or a few years ago, Malaysia maintained its integrity and its economy. Now, so we Muslims have to be aware, have to have an, some kind of insight and intuition to understand the reality of people. So these people who give us the words that we like are not all the time uh, truthful and sincere. So Allah says these people give you the speech that you like, that you admire, that impresses, impresses you. Then they would spread mischief on the land. And if it is said to them, some among, unfortunately we're talking on a, some kind of international level, but this applies to the individual level. There are individuals who are like that. They tell you we want to do, we want to do what is good, we want to help you, but actually they are destroying you and they are spreading mischief, and they are spreading sin and innovation. And the people like, especially the people of the media, most of the people involved in the media today, they tell you we want to spread and to want to increase awareness among people. But what they are doing actually, they are destroying the morality of people. They are destroying the shyness that is in the hearts of the Muslim men and women. Then if it is said to these people, fear Allah, fear Allah. Why do, you, why do you do this? Fear Allah, do what is righteous, don't spread mischief. Actually, they, their arrogance carries them off to sin more and to do more evil. They have, some, they have pride and arrogance with the sin that they are doing. Then Allah says, for these people, paradise will be the final abode and the final destination and what an evil resting place. Then Allah gives the example of people who uh, dedicate their lives for the sake of Allah. They have a trade, uh, a transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They sell themselves to Allah. They dedicate their lives, the whole of their life to spread the goodness of Islam to spread what is good among the people so that in order to get in return the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his reward and Allah is so merciful to these people then Allah says all oh, you who believe enter in, into Islam full-heartedly take Islam as one in, entirety take Islam in its entirety as one unit as one body take it all the instructions that we find in Islam take them don't start to pick and choose from Islam Islam is one system, take it as a whole. Because if you start to pick and choose and take things out of context, you will not achieve Islam and you will not understand Islam. This is why many people who criticize Islam, especially in the West, especially disbelievers, they take one part of Islam out of context and they start to criticize it. This is not the way you deal with Islam. Take Islam in its entirety as one unit, as one system. And this, this is where the beauty of Islam, the wisdoms and the light of Islam lies. Then Allah says, and if you uh, slip after that, O believers, uh, if you falter after entering into Islam, uh, after the truth has come to you, if you turn away from it and slip away from it intentionally, intentionally then know that Allah is almighty and Allah is all wise. And Allah will support his religion and Allah will make it prevail. Then Allah criticizes the believers. Then uh, why don't they believe? What are they waiting for? That Allah comes to them along with the angels? Then Allah says, if Allah comes, then this will be the end of the matter. Allah will come to judge uh, between the people on the day of judgment. So these are the wisdoms that we, uh, we can take. Uh, we should be careful of the people who... Uh, impress us with their speech but what they do is spread mischief and we should enter Islam in its entirety take it, take it as one unit as one system this is where the beauty of Islam and the light of Islam lies now until we meet with another light from the Quran from the wonderful light of the Quran I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh by the Quran and make it a guide, light and mercy. Allah, let us memorize what we've forgotten. Know it and educate us, educate us. What we missed, what we missed. Oh Allah, grant us the. Ability to recite it, to recite it.